uh, pharmaceuticals are showing up. Because we use antibiotics massively in the agricultural industry, and because lots of people are taking drugs uh, in their homes that just sort of end up in the local water stre waste stream that finds its way into drinking water. We find um, minute levels of pharmaceuticals in the water. Um, we don't know anything about the health effects of those. Only because they haven't done the studies to find out if there are health effects. Um, and the thing about a lot of these chemicals, um, especially ones that mimic our hormones, is that they act on our bodies at very, very low levels. So just because they were low levels, it doesn't mean there isn't a health effect associated with it. So how do the pills that you take up in your home end up in your drinking water? To answer that question, we need to first understand where our water is coming from. This is a watershed. This is where the whole story begins. Uh, when the snow falls on the top of the mountains, all we can see there is a little bit. That's basically like distilled water. It's some of the purest water you can find. Now, part of the protecting it here is as soon as we move just a mile downstream, that's where all, this, uh, all these chemicals start coming in from our day-to-day -day use. This little town has its drinking water supply above the town right. where it's clean. And every town always puts its wastewater discharge below itself. And that's what we're trying to get people to recognize. Everything that we do is affecting people downstream because our sewage is water. And so people just need to recognize that there's more to the water story than turning on the tap. You know, one of the, the things that we can all do is just go with the mindset that our drains are not a dump. And when our drains do become a dump, Anything that gets thrown down the toilet or flushed down the drain comes, in comes into that plant. It gets screened out and then the microbes chew up the chemistry and then they dis discharge what we have here. There are nutrients in this water that the fish like, that this water is rich in nutrients. Mm -hmm. And therefore, bacteria, algae, bugs, plants start growing in it, mm -hmm. which then the fish come in to eat that material. That's a good thing. There, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. The problem is that along with those nutrients that are a good thing are these endocrine disrupting chemicals that are not a good thing. Where do those come from? Those come from us. Right. Uh, bisphenol A, nonophenol, diethyl phthalate, all the plasticizers. Plastics have, or they're hormone mimics. Mm -hmm. They're not hormones, they just inter they behave right. like a hormone. Right. One or two of the very potent estrogens that you see in this water here that we know cause endocrine disruption in the fish are the same chemicals that leach out of bottled water. And what that means for the fish is that it's literally altering their sex organs. We are examining a cross-section of a gonad of a Boulder Creek fish. These are from the fish that I saw in the river. Exactly. And when we see blue structures here, these dark blue, these are sperm producing cells. Only a, a few microns away, we're in the middle of what looks like a totally healthy ovary. From the same fish? Yeah, that's the problem. These are in the same fish. This is not a normal occurrence. So this is like a transgender fish. fish. This will be an intersex fish. Every time we sample downstream of the wastewater plant, we find fish like this, with gonads that have both ovarian and testicular tissue. Go upstream, we never see it. Never found an intersex fish upstream. This is a national issue. And more importantly, it's a global issue. This is a problem every stream in every city more than likely has. 